Okay, so let's start our fourth arithmetic review lesson. This one is on something I like to refer to as the most missed concept in all of Algebra 1. And I'm serious. This, if you mix this up, um, you're going to, you know, it's going to hurt. And it happens all year round. And it can be best seen in a very basic example, which is what is the difference between these two quantities? Well, this thing means I'm taking the number negative 3 and I'm squaring it. So it's negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. Okay? This thing here is not saying take negative 3 and square it. This is saying take the opposite of 3 squared. So I only have one negative sign, and then I, I only expand the, two, uh, the, the 3 out with the two exponents. So it's like negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. Big difference. And you're like, okay, I get that. Well, okay, people say that, but then I change the numbers up on you, and I change the exponents. This is algebra, after all. And I'll say this, well, hey, what's that? Well, that's negative 5 to the 0 power, which is 1. Then I'll say, hey, what's that? Well, that's the opposite of 5 to the 0 power, which is negative 1. I kind of have to follow the order of operations, deal with that exponent first, and then make the whole thing negative. Okay, and then I can say, well, well, how about this? What's negative 2 to the fourth power? Well, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And I follow my trick for multiplication. I got four signs that are negative. That means my final answer is positive. And then 2, 4, 8, 16. Okay? But if I write it like this, I'm asking for the opposite of 2 to the fourth. So expanded, I only expand that 2 and I end up with negative 16, okay? I don't, if I want to include the negative in the expansion, I got to group it together with parentheses, okay? Now, speaking of that, if I want to raise 2 thirds uh, to the second power, I don't write it like that because it's ambiguous where that exponent's attached. It looks like 2 squared over 3. That's frowny face, don't do that. So if you want to raise the whole fraction to a power, you got to put it in parentheses. Um, same thing with the negative. If you want to raise the whole thing to an exponent, you got to put it in parentheses, which just, in this case, gives you 4 ninths. All right. Now, and you're like, okay, I get it. I'm going to remember the rule like, oh, hey, if there's a parentheses, it's positive. Well, you can't say that because if I said, um, you know, negative 2 in parentheses cubed, well, obviously, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. So you can't remember the rule as, oh, hey, if there's a... If there's parentheses, it's going to be positive. And then you think, well, OK. And you figure it out, and you're like, oh, it's just it's the power. If it's negative in parentheses with an even exponent, then it's going to be positive because the signs cancel. And if it's an odd exponent, then it's going to be negative. Well, you can't say that either because I can try to trick you like I like doing just to see if you're reading things carefully, kids. Um, because if I do that, you have to think about where the parentheses are and what they group. Do these parentheses actually tell you to group the negative 2 together, or are they just grouping the quantity opposite of 2 squared? These parentheses really don't mean anything at all to the problem. I can totally get rid of them. And so this one is negative 4, because if I look at what's inside the parentheses, it's expanding the 2, not the negative, and I get negative 4. So be very careful. You have to be conscious of where the parentheses begin and where they end, what they're actually grouping. Now, and then you're like, okay, I get that, Miss Hill. But then, hey, when I do this in the graphing quadratics unit, I'll say, hey, kids, I want you to graph y equals x squared, and I want you to use the x values of um, negative 3, negative 2, dot, 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 up to 3. And so you're going to use your calculator, and you're going to think, oh, I'm going to type it in like that you know, when I take the negative 3 and I square it. But is that really negative 3 squared? No, this is the opposite of 3 squared. If I want to take negative 3 and square it, i got to put it in parentheses. Now, if you get in the habit of automatically putting things in parentheses that you're going to raise to a power, um, like in this case, if like when I substitute in the x, like if I automatically put things that are substituted in in parentheses, you're not going to run into this problem. But um, so you have to make sure that you put the parentheses in here. Okay, so just be very careful. Because here's the difference. Here's the correct graph of this y equals x squared. It's supposed to look like this. It's called a parabola. 
because when you square any real number you're gonna get a positive number so that's what the graph looks like now if you make the most missed thing in algebra if you make this mistake and you choose instead to like leave the parentheses out this is what your graph looks like literally this half of the graph gets reflected this half that's supposed to be up here gets reflected because you accidentally messed up the sign and messed up all of these to be negative values this is not the way the graph is supposed to look and if you do negative three squared like that and negative two squared like that and negative one squared like that this is when you get those mistakes you're supposed to put it in parentheses so it seems like oh I get it when it's just the numbers but when I throw variables in the mix that's when it starts to happen and then it's gonna happen again when we do the quadratic formula because there's an x squared in that thing too and you gotta remember when you're gonna substitute into an equation you better put that thing in parentheses